Now then, you're welcome back. I have to say, everybody in the office delighted with our next guest when we uh, got word that he was able to come in. He is an iconic figure in Irish sport. He'll hate that description, but he is. 16 years at the top level with the Cork Hurlers. Uh, represented the footballers as well. Won a National League and a Munster title with the footballers. Played in a North Ireland final. And then on the hurling front... Three All-Ireland medals, five Munsters, one National League, three times a Hurling All-Star, the 04 Hurler of the Year, and uh, not your average life story either, as Mio Lamurhertig once put it. Uh, his father's from Fermanagh, his mother's from Fiji, neither a Hurling stronghold. So for the week that's in it, it is super to have Sean Ogahalpin here in the studio. You are most welcome. Thanks, Joe, and um, good to be here. Thanks for having me on this I- I- iconic show itself. Can I... Um, it's been busy for you Can well it has it's funny we were um, just over in uh, Sydney the World Cup getting underway tomorrow and I was just thinking you know, looking back at your life One of the, here's the wild thing about you uh, that you'll it's know it's a starter for me really <laughs> Sydney isn't it yeah it is uh, not many people would know that and yeah, probably yeah. a lot of your listeners would associate me being born bred you know on the north side of a Cork City but far from it yeah you know, um, so here's the mad thing 88 11-year-old Sean Oag arrives over to an Irish winter. Yeah. Now, that's... <laughs> Middle of February. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's child, where are you going? Oh, child, where are you going? Child cruelty, for starters. Yeah. So you arrive over at 11 and 88. The mad thing is, 11 short years later, you win an All-Ireland Senior Hurling Final for Cork, and two weeks after that, you play in an All-Ireland Football Final against Meath. I mean... Per Teddy McCarthy's passing last month, like what he did was iconic. My God, 11 years to go from pitching up, where the hell am I, to two All-Ireland finals in the space of two weeks is um, kind of hard to get your head around when you think about it. Yeah, um, if you put it that way, it is. Um, for years, I wouldn't have put it in my head that way. Yeah. Kinda, it was just onto the next training session, onto the next game, year, how can I improve, how can I make the school team, how yeah. can I make the club team, like even making a Cork team would have been the wildest dreams, do you know what I mean, growing up in Canterbury, Bankstown in Sydney, yeah. kind of bizarre thing about it though is maybe it was just fate, but I remember um, uh, growing up in Sydney, um, dad used to wake myself and Dale up, so Dale is, he's a year younger than me. Um, and then there's a gap between myself and Dale and Satanta and Isaac of about eight years. So, you know, um, um, so I, I remember in Sydney for a few years, Dad we used to wake us up half 12 at midnight in Australia to listen to the all Ireland hurling finals and football. But we, like, I was five or six, I had a clue what it was like. What am I listening? But like one of the names, there's the two names that jump out vividly. One is Jimmy Barry Murphy and Jack O'Shea. They were the only, like, didn't know what was going on. <laughs> didn't know what. Didn't know what the game was really. You know, only that it was played in Ireland, and my dad was Irish. I hadn't a clue. But it's funny. Then you fast forward, and, and I'm, I, I'm playing Cork Miners, and who's my manager? But the guy that I'm listening to on the radio, like back those years ago in Sydney, can I? I haven't taught him that. You wouldn't. You know. Um, Why haven't you told him that? No, I should. <laughs> You'd be delighted to hear that. What, what an image that is of you and your brother probably having never seen the game and trying to have to figure out what it is through the radio and your dad, millions of miles from the home. Oh, yeah. I, and I, I, I remember it was it was probably, it was only, I'd say dad must have been 15 years living abroad at that stage. Do you know, he immigrated, left for Manor, Ross left for Manor in, in the early 70s. So um, you can imagine for a person living abroad, that was the only probably occasion where he could really connect at home. Yes. And he'd have a beer at midnight. Yeah. And if we were lucky enough, he'd give us a sip. <laughs> it was the only time I drank alcohol. Well, I tell you a lie. I did dabble a small, but when I was 17 years of age, but I've been teetotaler since. But like, yeah, myself and Dale would have can of twoies, which was uh, a, a, a Sydney beer, you know, kind of. Yeah. And I mean, no one drank Foster's, even though Foster's was heavily commercialised here as the Australian beer. But like when you were Sydney, you were drinking twoies. So myself and Neil would sip twoies. It was the only, t- yeah. And, um, and it was the only time he'd feel like you could even picture him. Yeah. And like Keon Corla 
in Crow Park watching the game. And then that was it. Following there, you just got on with life as a Sydney Tonian. Is that what they call people yeah. living from Sydney? And you're the, or the occasion in the year where I kind of half believed that such a place Ireland existed was Patrick's Day. Because if we fell in a weekday, we'd get a day off and that would bring us to the Patrick's Day parade in downtown Sydney yeah. and he'd have dressed like the flags there on the wall looking like leprechauns <laughs> kind of, um, and um, yeah I, I I try and banish some of those photographs from the forearm because it looks mortifying but look that 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 was life as an immigrant son yes. living abroad but anyway yeah like uh, so fast forward I come to Cork and um, uh, uh, that, that, as I get older and I try to reflect more and then especially when you have next generation family my eldest sister has she has three nieces and a nephew um, they're at a stage where they're playing um, and they're questioning because they might hear stuff like oh you, uncle you played with Cork and such and such a person told me you won this and, and it only dawns you know at that you know uh, at the moment the significance of the achievements, yes. you know. But I mean, I mean, any player I tell you, you you can't, like, you can't celebrate your achievements, you know, mm. like when you're playing because, like, I know what, what golfer said when you rest, you rust, you know. So I don't know who, like, it was a famous golfer, but the, and then that's the way it's been, and it's, it'll be the same for the, you know, the current day hurlers, you know, kind of and. Look, like, we're, we're, like, we're, we're going to look at players take the field this sun in the All Ireland hurling final. You have TJ Reid. Is he on seven or eight? Yeah. All Ireland, like, I mean, the significance of that. And then you have, on the other side, they're playing against the Limerick side who are going for four in a row. Um, uh, I'd like bunker stuff all yeah. together, like, you know, but. Uh, what, um, like, a beautiful and also slightly poignant image of your dad. And the two sons and the beer. Oh, like lovely! Like you get emotional thinking about it. Yeah, no, I am, um, and um, it's um, um, I, 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 I could see why all of us are who we are because of that upbringing, you know. And I mean, he made a conscious decision himself and mum to probably more dad than mum. <laughs> mum didn't want to leave. The life was too good in Sydney and she had more of her relatives over there. Yeah. When mum came here, it was like, she was cut away. I mean, this was early in the 80s. There was no internet. I mean... Barely a phone. I forget about it, like, yeah. you know. And then the most... I'd say the saddest thing I've ever experienced was mum getting a letter in 1994. Um saying that her mom, my grandmother, had passed away, but that was a year beforehand. Like, you know, she only found out a year afterwards. What? Yeah, like it was, uh, like that's, uh, I mean, 1994 doesn't sound too far away, but like uh, when I look back, uh, where no, sure, everything is happening. So she would have so, gone at least a year without talking to her own mum. No, Easily. like once we left, that was it. Gone, there was gone. very little. Like my grandmother was on Rotuma, <laughs> an island in the middle of nowhere, in the South Pacific. I mean, there's hardly a phone on the island, like you know. So, but anyway, um, she's that's uh, Yeah, like it's um, like astonishing in ways, you know. Do we? Um, it's only a generation ago. You know, yeah. When you put it that way, yeah. Um, God, your poor mum. So, so, so. Sorry. So, back to the point. Um, yeah. Look, it was always in my dad's mind. To, when I, I, I suppose when I was at a stage before teenage years, mm. to get us back to Ireland yes. and to experience the great Irish culture and J is a big part of that, the Irish language and. Um, for years I resented it, Joe. I you can know? imagine. Yeah. I hate like for years I resented coming Sydney coming sounds, to Cork. Sydney and sounds like a better it deal. It does, yeah. but the, like the more the, like the more I get mature and the more kind of like 
I, I left the rock and he said dad made the right decision mm. do you know um, and was your was your I, I, forgive me sorry I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm in right or not was your dad did your dad see you play for Cork and do great things for Cork yeah yeah he did okay Yeah. so what a wild yeah. thing to go from the radio in Sydney to then see him out there winning in Ireland yeah. that's my young fella yeah I, anyway, no one dad anyway dad will play down everything like, right okay know, uh, he's <laughs> that'll be the guy at the very corner of the stand just keeping away from everyone like and yes um, and then j- j- just just like to see his sons doing well but yes. and did your mum come to enjoy watching GA? oh mum mum you name any sport mum is there right loves it I am um, um, I yeah I don't know where she got the sporting background because neither her parents played any competitive sport on the island but mum I mean um, obviously Gaelic games would be you know because oh because of our involvement in it over the years um, but any sport mum would sit down and watch right. and enjoy she's just a sporty person yeah you know. Yeah, well, look, it, I mean, it's uh, like I said, from 11 to almost doing what Teddy McCarty did and winning one All-Ireland. Like, Gerlock Nan says, if you start hurling at six, you're a late starter. So, sorry, <laughs> yeah, I don't know I, that leaves you. And it's funny, I, 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 I get that a lot because I'm on the other side of the fence now. I'm, I keep involved right. by coaching a few teams, you know, mainly mainly my own club in the Piercy, down in Cork. Um, uh, and and I get a hurling is a very technical game which yeah. takes years and 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 even yes. at that yes. even the best don't so, make it so that shows you um, if, if an 11 year old pitched up now from the other side of the world to you at Napiershig and someone said you know he's going to play for Cork in 8 years you'd be saying ah yeah, you'd we'll probably see. laugh at him like so there you go you tell know? him to, to so, get real because yeah. you play down you, you, you I mean I, I, I sense your, that humility your dad playing down stuff you'd play down how good you were is my sense of, of you but you must have been a natural to pick up two sports to get to that level to be as skillful as you were you must have just had it whatever it is um, I, I wouldn't go as far to say natural, but I was driven. Okay. I was driven, and then because of that, that got me over obstacles. Probably, maybe, maybe other people mightn't have got over. Okay. And so um, that was your great strength, almost. Yeah, and um, I mean, you think of it like you know, um, you leave, you leave Sydney, which is to centre your life you know as a 10 or 11 year old like you're disappointed from the get go so I was used to disappointment and then my first couple of years trying to learn hurling it was just all disappointment but I was used to okay. from other aspects of life I was just used to it and you just get on with it and um, you're not the kid who had everything and then suddenly disheartened at a barrier you're yeah yeah no absolutely not and maybe that was a good grounding you know kinda, uh, and it needed to be because like Joe, like I, I, I look back to my early years starting off hurling, like up in the pier, like it was just literally given a thirty-six inch hurley, you know, like back in those days, like you see players now, they play with wooden spoons. Yeah. Seen at the county players, like back then, you would give it <laughs> up to your knee height, uh, uh, of the, like, and then off you went, and yeah. anything that moved, you just pulled. Yeah. <laughs> and and then yeah, and if you took out a few of your own players in the process, so be it. And okay. and um uh but like here comes I, I so I mean I didn't do it all by myself. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is where I'm very much indebted to Napiershi, which is my own club. Um the North Mon, which was the local secondary school, um which was famous for hurling. I mean would have produced great players over the year probably Jack Lynch being probably the most famous down to Tomas Mulcahy Tony Sullivan Teddy McCarthy God rest his soul okay. um, um, so you're you're going to school and you're walking through corridors with all these fellas you know photographs on the wall and you just want to be inspired and yes. you want to wear the fan blue and white you know uh, Northman jersey and um, uh, and then those two establishments probably like without them I, I yeah. don't think I would have developed you know kind of and and I had oh man like if, if, if you look at the quality of coaches that I had growing up in both club and the school um, um, 
uh, and what helps as well when you're at that age um, and he's still my sporting hero so Tony Sullivan played with Cork in the late 80s 90s um, around, around old Paris he's nicknamed Baby Jesus because that man literally walking water and a hurling feet so by following watching Tony play in Parky Keeve Simple Stadium and if Cork got their all runs just following his career kind of helped me embed my yes. dreams and um, um, and probably the greatest thrill in my hurling career was to play with Tony then afterwards at club level oh fantastic um, well I always knew like I mean you mentioned there the, the work rate and the diligence I always knew that about you I remember I, I, I pretty would have been towards the end of school around the time you were winning those All-Irelands but reading like a, there was an interview I always remember in the Sunday Times about you and it was um it was saying things like the morning after winning the All-Ireland, you know, when everybody else was in bed hung over, Sean Og, you know, went out of the hotel in Dublin and went for a run. Oh. And it also said he always has his a watch. Story, yeah. <laughs> he always has his watch five minutes fast. Not a man to be late for things. Uh, I'll have to correct you there. Um, <laughs> yes, a man to be late for a lot of things. Okay. Ask my wife, Siobhan. But not late for training okay that, <laughs> because training was top priority but anything other than that um, let's put it this way my punctuality wouldn't be the greatest but yeah I mean that doesn't still stop you putting your watch forward <laughs> by five minutes uh, which I have done yes still, you still do it yeah, okay. it's quarter to is it 41 out of 53 there so, so die, old habits die hard Joe. Um, so do you do you look at the watch and go oh, I still have five minutes though yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it defeats the purpose or yeah <laughs> but you went for a run the morning after the All Ireland I always remember thinking that's not your uh, average GAA player and I know you didn't do it for attention you were just doing your thing and all the rest but it it's, yeah, it's, it's well, something okay technically that like a, a white lie that gathered legs over ah, the years okay. um, so here's the long and short of it right um, so any player that gets the experience post-match or and winning night greatest night of all time right but you get no sleep yes very little sleep right which is grand okay so it's coming six half six seven o'clock now in the Burlington okay and I've got no sleep whatsoever yeah and, and you're a teetotaler I'm a teetotaler yeah so you're surrounded by people who've had a few at that stage yeah yeah <laughs> but that's okay I'm cool with that okay. Can, uh, I've just a customer over the years so it's, it's, it's grand and and I'm glad you do those things because BSC when you look back now when you're not for, when yeah. you're not with those players anymore yeah it's, it's, it's great that you've had that bond and connectivity and that's where the bonds really fortify it's in those moments like that where it's like on holiday trips more than what actually happens on training sessions okay so it's, 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 it's half six seven o'clock Sean Oga's got very little sleep and I, 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 I and, 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 and the burning is still bananas and I said I need to get out of here right ASAP I need to clear my head I need to get out of there take a time out <laughs> so I threw on my I mean I had to get on my suit which was covered in beer okay so I threw on my shorts and the top and I go for a walk and it's a usual and it's the same walk that myself Don Lowe Kevin Hartner John Garner Tom Kenny would do on the Saturday on the eve before the all Ireland final mm. We go for the same walk down Raglan Road, bring it down to the US Embassy, and we'll do a loop around, back up, and then back into the hotel, and we'll have our meal for the evening. So I go on a walk, and it's a it, it's it's a chilly morning. Yeah. So on when I reach the embassy, I says I affect that. I, I, I like I'm too cold, so I jog back. Right. People see me coming back and they're adding <laughs> one and one and they're getting a, g a gazillion and one. He's a machine. They think I'm after running out the Dunleary and back, yeah. you know, which is far from the... But that's what happened. Well, listen, it's... Uh, well, like, and then I'm don't glad don't, that I did it because when so I went back, I was all refreshed yeah. because the following day, I mean, like you still have responsibilities as a player the following day because, you know, um, you might be asked to talk to media. Yeah. 
uh, later on later on that evening you go back to your home fans down in Cork I mean you have to be in decent shape exactly well listen so. it was a great story and I'd say every other GAA player in the country went oh my god so it probably did you no harm can I, sh- I there's a photo because it's funny the 21st century GAA player I would think of like around that time I think of like McGinney and his biceps oh, and yeah. Arma. beast but I also think of Sean Oak I think of like the 90s lads like Jesus that Clare team under like nah and they all trained hard don't get me wrong but it, like there was more attention maybe to diet and physique in the at the, at the turn of the century and I remember in a paper seeing this photo of you now radio listeners I, I apologise YouTube listeners were going to put it up and I remember thinking this is not how GA players look have a look at this photo here if you're watching YouTube now look at that fella there yeah your body fat percentage there is about 2 and I don't know who the fella in the background is, but he's not taking off his top next to you. <laughs> well, the fella in the background is the great Gerard Hartman, right. the famous sports physio, yes. terrorist down in Limerick, that's who's right. synonymous with working with Sonia Sullivan and the Kenyan runners. Yes. So that's the great Gerard Hartman. Um, if he's listening, Gerard, uh, hello. Um, I, uh, and then here's another thing. I mean, Jesus, you're, I mean, Look, talk about skeletons coming out of the wardrobe now. Um, my connection with Joe Hartman only came about because I was involved in a bar car crash. Oh, yes. And I made smithereens of my right knee. Yes. My kneecap just completely came off. In 01. In 01, correct. Yeah. yeah. In 01. And so after the car crash, my kneecap is halfway up my leg. Yeah. But I didn't know it was my kneecap. I thought it was just bad swelling on my toy and it was only later on that night um, in Nina Hospital they kind of broke the severity of the injury so I get operated get my patella tendon stitched back again um, I'm told by I, I, I'm told by medics that I'd be lucky enough to walk properly not alone run right um, but um, here's where I must give great credit to Dr. Con Murphy, who's been the Cox Sports Medical Doctor yeah. for forever, t- 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 since 1884, right? <laughs> yeah. Can, uh, since since when the uh, long time anyway, 40 years plus. Yeah. Okay, and uh, um, so so after my operation, Dr. Con comes visit me uh, in the CUH, and he uh, and he says, "Look, you, it, it's a bad one, Ogie." Kind of. Um, and um, he says, look, not many, not many people will come back from this, but knowing you, you will. And Joe, man, that's all I needed wow. to hear. Yeah. That's all I needed. Whether he believed it or not, I'd, I'd imagine if I'd have the conversation with Khan, he'd probably, Khan, did you actually believe that? He'd probably tell it, no, not in a million years, but that's all I needed. And so through my injury, uh, and I needed someone probably the best I needed the best to get me back back yeah. running properly and that's how I came in connection with Joe Hartman and nearly every it, twice a week I'd go from Cork up to Limerick and he'd work on my leg and nice. so it took about a year to get back well I, I, it took me a year to get back so I missed the rest of 01 mm. I mean the car crash happened literally like three days before the first one of the months of championship I was up in Dublin doing a promotion thing for Guinness at the time who we were sponsored the Ireland Championship. So I was running late from Dublin. I was driving, rushing back to get for seven o'clock train and like, what a Gambi, you know? And um, and then I was involved in the accident a couple of days ago. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, that was the last year of the the knockouts right. you know first one so Cork were beaten by Limerick that Sunday so it was I didn't lose much that year if you yeah. understand what I'm saying it wasn't like Cork had to go through qualifiers and I missed out in more games yeah. so Joe uh, so Hartman with the help of Joe Hartman I got back playing the following year um, you're, but, in, you're in ridiculous he got you into ridiculous shape by the looks of things yeah, yeah, yeah look um, uh, I, I um, Will you stop now? That, I mean, was, that was on calendars gotta, for the Housewives of Ireland for their uh, next year. Uh, come on, year. Joe, please. <laughs> if um, you see any more, I won't fit out this door. I no, can I? And was you, were, you, were you ever the same again with your knee? 
Would you need this? Would you, no, was, touch wood, Joe, man. I, I, I tell you what, I've had no recurrences yeah. or recurrences. When, when you took the field again, could you move as well and turn and twist and everything? Or were you? Well, here's the thing. In 2002, when I got back playing, um, I was well off. You, sure? you know, I yeah. was I, I I was just well off. Like my, my knee was my my injury was rehab, but I was just well off the pace. Like and I, the mind just wanted to be there, but I couldn't be there. You know, I, I couldn't get to the break of the ball. Um, and 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 it took a year probably playing underneath my belt in or two in two thousand or two to get back to pre accident form which was 2003 then I started yeah. to get back to um, but you did get back eventually yeah I like yeah. I did and um, I, 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 it's funny it's I, 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 I tend to dismiss it in my career because I like I mean like just if I didn't get back yeah that would probably uh, yeah he was the guy that was dogged by a car crash but the fact that I was lucky enough to get back playing and then had another good couple of years yes. on top of that and like being involved with a few our own winning teams it, it, it's, it's forgotten about yes, you know? yeah, but, it's forgotten about but like um, but geez, it was no joke to go through clearly yeah but I mean t- keeping in team with my life growing up you, you, you just I'm just used to disappointment such a strange and way just to use the disappointments and then you just bounce back react and yeah. you like you, 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 you go at it do you, do you feel like that's your shape that way that, that I'm used to disappointment does that apply to today when you get a setback you just power on through it's ah, no, you, no d- you, 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 you like you, don't get me wrong you're, like, you're obviously initially disappointed yeah. and you take stock of what's happened and then you try to process what I need to do and then the following day then you just you go. Kinda, I yeah. mean like it's funny over the years like and don't don't you worry I've shared a lot of like losing dressing rooms like in you know uh, uh, either with the club or with Cork I like like I, I, I don't shed a tear and just because of that you just don't like you just you just know tomorrow's going to come again and then you get at it mm. you know um, and, and then you tend not to tend not to dwell too much and the um, the three All-Irelands that you won so this, this great Cork team 99 uh, you marked DJ in the final average age of 22 yeah it's a young very, court very team. young team, yeah. In 04 in the rain, you mark Henry. What Henry says about that day against Cork is, I walked off knowing the better man won that day in Sean Oak. I've marked a lot of great defenders over the years. He's as good as any of them. I would rank him right at the top, said Henry of the 04. And then 05, the two in a row, you're captain. Yeah. Beat Galway. Make the speech in Irish. I saw you say, the only regret is that I didn't say a few words in, in Rotuman. Rotuman. Or for, yeah. I, oh man, I wish I had that time back again because every time I see mum, she's just a reminder that, why didn't I do it, lad? Jesus, yeah. why didn't I do it? And I, whenever I, I, I try to chill out with mum as much as I can because it's the only, I mean, I don't go back to Fiji you know I yeah. rarely go back I mean the last time I was there was 20 years ago right. I hope to go back there again um, so she's my only connection mm. with and that's what I like to just to remind me that that is another part of me mm. and um, she so whenever I go visit her she cook Rotuman dishes I talk Rotuman I can still talk not greatly but I can still talk my mom's language right. and then she'll throw on music from back home and it's it's funny it's the, it's, it's the flip side no mom does that to bring her back home yes where dad was doing that you know 40 years ago yes. to bring her back yes. home it's amazing and, and the parallels uh, there yeah and, uh, and then she get up in the she get like she get up in the middle of the kitchen and then she do her routine and dance and kind of it's yeah it's bizarre to us. No, but, it's, uh, all, no it's, 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 um, it's beautiful, yeah. No, um, it's amazing you put it that way. You're, yeah, you're but like, why didn't I? Ah, oh, oh, hon, if I, if I have four in there, hon, no suffect tipo, ma, if no red ahi wak, no le fiang rotuma. But like, ah, oh, it, it, it kills me. But sure, look, come here, what's, what's done is done. And yeah. kinda, um, but ah, but they were great years, Joe, you know. Um, what, like, what, they what, were, a, what a team is, like, a team of like such personality more than like serious people and like innovative thinkers about the game like Dunlough short puck outs yeah. and the running game and like 
Cork County board will strike if we feel we, we have to strike as young men and I know like there's regrets with that as well but of course there is yeah and even we were saying outside before you came in like almost the last generation to not wear a helmet like Arthur outside who loves his hurling he was, I was we were saying Sean O's coming in and, and he just said jeez no helmet was beautiful though wasn't it <laughs> yeah everybody knew who you were you know and look I I, I I get the safety part of it. I, you ah, know, yeah. I do, I do, I do. It happened, but there was something magical. It's funny, Joe, right? And I, I keep on saying this to people and then they wouldn't like that have The safest place to be is in the middle of a monster hurling final or hurling final with no helmet. Because, I mean, think of it like you're, you're involved in a game where everyone... Like their skill levels is at the highest of the highest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no, there's no late strike. There's no fault. There's no lazing. It's sharp. It's sharp. Precision. Like it is. Like the room for getting a nick. Do you know is very small. Do you know? Can I? I mean, you're more because everyone. You're more liable to get injured in in a club challenge yes. game in okay. February than you are but but come here I do get the safety part of it and I mean the helmets are in but yeah I mean the downfall to that is some of our best hurlers at the moment are they wouldn't recognise them no. if they walked down the street which is a shame yeah it is do you know and it's true like you like, really wouldn't which is a shame yeah. like I'd love to see a day where especially where helmets were like you'd walk up O'Connell Street and you'd have the best Limerick you know all the Limerick and Kilkenny hurlers in photographs on O'Connell Street with no helmet on so they'd know like oh yeah TJ Reid looks like that or someone or, or Keen Lynch looks like that without the helmet on like I, I do feel on TV they could do a lot more with like the pictures of fellas if they have a score or they're down injured or they're just Good idea. talked about just yeah. get their faces on the TV bit more. Good, uh, but you're right yeah there were, there were the days where I mean even my nephew now who's grown up playing he's 8 years of age yeah. like he just he just thinks like if he looks at footages from he thinks it's like brave hair <laughs> stuff like <laughs> <laughs> uh, like but yeah uh, but you nail it when people talk about say my career I says ah the key is you need to you need to play with great players yeah. and then I was fortunate enough to be in the period where um, and then all like all the players around that time they weren't all the same age like you had Brian Cochran who was at the latter end of Brian Cochran was coming into his early 30s myself Don Logue Dermot Timmy Mack Jodine we were all the same age kind of around you know 26, 27 then you had another generation like John Gardner Tom Kenny the two O'Connor twins Ronan Curran who were younger you know they were like five, six years younger but it was we just gel well, you yeah. know, between those three different, like, oh, and, and we would have came off back of successful minor and 21 teams, do you know what I mean? Kind of at different stages, yeah, mm. but we seem to gel well and, and, I mean, as well and good to have a great, like, to have a great team with great players, but, I mean, you need a management team to gel all that, do you know, gel all that yeah, together yeah. and then, I mean, that's where Don O'Grady and John Allen, who were the managers in those years, and their backroom team, you know, kind of um, guys that had the selectors with them. Mm. Um, 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 but 99 is a special one because it's, 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 it's the first one, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, uh, it's the first one. And, 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 and then... Uh, and then who's it done with? I had Jimmy Barry Murphy then as the manager yeah, then, like, you know. So um, I mean, Jimmy didn't need to say much. Like, right? You just went through. You you, you, you go through the wall of China. Yeah. When you had someone as iconic as Jimmy, I I, I never saw Jimmy play. It, you know, but like, I mean, geez, he's he's probably the next fella after Jack Lynch. You know, down in Cork or Chrissy Ring. Like the, the, the way people view him well, it's down, a, down, it's, down, it's, down below, it's, always, and, it's uh, always funny on Sky Sports when they ask Roy Keane who his favourite sports person. There is. you go, no. <laughs> he says Jimmy Barry Murphy. Yeah. Um, uh, and then see, can I? Uh, I regret not seeing Jimmy playing. Yeah. I didn't live in Cork when Jimmy played. Do you know? Can I? I wish I had of. Do you know? My probably love for Jimmy would be triple fold. Do you know? But, but. 
to have to have someone like Jimmy Jimmy Barry as the manager and 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 like I re- I remember he said very little coming up to the 99 final to me but he said look I know you won't let me down right like even just that Jesus man Joe come on <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't hurl after that lad Jesus come on that's like, great yeah uh, d- don't turn up lad were, were they like as magical 04 and 05 and the two in a row like are, are, are those weeks and those nights and those matches as kind of magical and, and vivid as you would hope they might be Oh no! But oh, back then, yeah. Um, like they must have been amazing, especially with all your mates around you. Like it was a brother in arms kind of vibe about that team. Yeah, they were, they, they, we were a close group. Mm. Um, um, I guess the the last in all three probably galvanised. Yeah, a lot of us. It was probably one that we felt that one that slipped away. Do you know, kind of um, talking to my Kilkenny friends, they'd argue that. O3 was the payback for 1999 yes. because they felt that that was the one that slipped away from them and we unexpectedly won that final um, um, but there's like there, that sport for you like yeah. to, to, you know the ones you expect to win you don't win and vice versa so you really O3 galvanised and I remember that winter lad I I, I, I still say it to this day I never train as hard with a team than O3 right the winter of 03 going into 04. 04 yeah. And I know it's easy to say no because we won it eventually in 04, but there was an air of this is O's. Like, yeah, steel. This is yeah. this is O's. Um, and then things were going according to plan until we met Ken McGrath, John Milan and company uh, in the middle of July yeah. in 04 that year. And they hip us by two, three points and you're saying like, oh man, is this like, this wasn't, this isn't going as per the script yeah. that we had in our head but uh, come here and, and we had to take a detour but we eventually got got back to the end and then, yeah, like, um, and really probably the icing in the cake was meeting Kilkenny in the final. Like, if we probably had it beaten anyone else in that final, it probably wouldn't have meant as much because uh, it was nice it was nice retribution from the year before mm. do you know um, I mean, but little did I know <laughs> little did I know Joe what was that well, come down the tracks three, three, four years after that oh they, like, they might have won the war potentially it's fair to say uh, yeah absolutely they yeah they, but was they did they did win they the did, war Joe let's, let's get that on record <laughs> I like you we won the battle argue. but they won the war like, was, I mean, was it as bitter you know the Stepford Wives and around the, the GPA and the strikes and stuff and obviously you just kept meeting each other you were clearly the two best teams in the country was it as bitter for you personally did, like, did you hate the side of them um, okay. I, I feel like some lads in the court team hated them but I don't know yes yes <laughs> yes correct um you don't strike I, 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 I like the way you put that yeah. like, you, you, know, you don't, I, don't as a I, I don't play a sport to hate yes I, I hate losing yeah. And I hated losing to Kilkenny, especially yeah. because they were the only county, one of few counties that'll put manners on you on an hurling pitch. You walk home or you go home after a game thinking you know it all, and then you say, Oh, Jesus, yeah. I have a lot to learn here. And plus, your knuckles be destroyed after playing Kilkenny. <laughs> it's just the way they play. They're just flick, flick, and he, if your hand goes near the ball at all, that ball is gone along with your three knuckles. And I've never, I've never had to put as many ice packs on my knuckles than after <laughs> going home, Joe. Yeah. It's just, but I say that out of admiration. Totally, absolutely. So, um, I, 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 do I hate Kilkenny? Absolutely not. Mm. I hated losing to him, mm. but because of that, we like, and then that's what sport needs. Sport needs we needed Kilkenny at that time to drive us on and vice versa yeah but some in that dressing room definitely yeah they probably they probably and 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 then they must have their own hidden reasons so be it you know so be it but I never took a field I I never took the field to play with Cork 
the hate the opposition yeah. team like it's not in my makeup like, no you, know? you, you wouldn't strike it's, me as it's not I like I, 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 I just play it I enjoy it if you win happy days if you're not shake, shake the opponent's hand well done and then and then and then you just hope that you get a chance the following year or soon again and, and, you, know, then, and you know the style of hurling the short puck outs the running hurling yeah like who's driving that there's a real intelligence about all that there's a real like thinking people driving that Ah, uh, you, like you, you, you'd imagine the master, the mastermind behind that would have been like a combination of Don Logue and Don O'Grady. Right. Um, and the rest of you were happy. I was, I like, I, 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 I was never privy to those conversations, other than when Don O'Grady was saying, "Look, if the option is on, Don Logue will play a shot. If the option is on, mm, okay. But, but." But make sure you're available for that option. Okay. And if it played short, you just got comfortable with it. You know, you received it, turn around, and then you were looking for a fella like Tom Kenny or Jerry O'Connor to run off your shoulder or run and cover, and you just pop it. Yeah. And then on we go. Yes. Um, but I like I was was I privy to the initial conversations that this was going to be <laughs> revolutionally moved? No, 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 whatsoever. I was just uh, I was just a foot soldier. Foot soldier. Just, uh, but, but everyone was happy to buy into it and liked it and thought it was the way to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, Don Logan is not a fella that you would. <laughs> if he if he if he said this is what we're going to do. He'd say any questions, but no one would. Fair enough. No one would even know. He would. He, he would. He would put out that question. Any questions, guys? But no, you just get on with yeah. it. You just trusted the manager, and 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 then you'd imagine Don Log, because he is central to that restart. Yes. You know, game plan like to show Poco. So you'd imagine he would have been thinking about this. Like, and I mean. If you if you look at what he's you know I I mean you we get maybe when he was playing people didn't get a glimpse of his you know genius yes, kind of and brain. but people do when they see his analysis yes. and he thinks differently let's put it that way to me or anyone else when it comes to hurling and and I suppose in some respects where hurling is now in terms of ball retention and short passing that's almost the logical con- conclusion of what she kind of started in a big way do you like the current game do you enjoy sitting down and the way it's played um I mean like what's not what's not to like about a team scoring 225 or you know so the scores seem to be um, uh, so from that point of view, there's nearly a score a minute, you know, which is which is good for the spectator. Um, um, I um, uh, I'm intrigued by strategies now that teams adopt. You know, um, I mean, it's kind of gone on more than like we. You're talking about autumn. That's ten, eleven years. Like that's passe you know, at this stage you know so I'm intrigued by what teams do um, oh, they've taken it to another level now there's no uh, doubt oh absolutely yeah. and and they've fine tuned a shorter game mm. um, more old short game was more with hand passes but they're able to find balls through traffic in 20 metres or 30 metre dinks you know kind of which is very impressive yeah. um, I feel I don't appreciate how much skill that takes actually Oh, Joe, it's yeah. like... Because they make it look vision easy. Vision number one, yeah. risk, um, precision, um, even down to the find, like, even down to the art of how you strike the ball off the hurley, you know, kind of, especially if he's not directly ahead and you're trying to hit a diagonal ball, kind of, um, uh, through a gap where you need to put a bit of a spin on it. Yes. Like, oh, it's... But you look at the two teams that will go next on it they'll do that that's no. that, like that part of that repertoire is like that's boring to them like, I know. You they, know they do make it's, it look easy but it couldn't be you know that's the beauty that's, no. that's what I tell my pupils that's the beauty about training should be boring it's boring to you and it should be boring to you but the likes of Joe that's seen it for the first time and he's mesmerised by this like but it should be boring who's, um, who's going to win oh Sunday um, if Troopy no, I hope neither team win because <laughs> it just means if Kilkenny win they go another honour ahead of Cork Yeah, they'll go to 37 we're still hanging in on 30 Limerick 
it's, if Limerick win it's another step closer even though Limerick have a bit to go but yeah. like kinda, they've made great inroads over the last five years um, uh, if okay if I was to pick a winner I'd probably edge it slightly towards Limerick and I rarely go against Kilkenny in all and finals rarely like there's there's four certain things in life like mm-hmm. you have Burt debt, taxes, and Kilkenny winning all or they rarely lose. And I can't believe myself saying it, but I think the current black and amber are disguised in Limerick and Green. Mm. Um, um, and but Limerick know, and this is the main reason why I think Limerick will. Limerick know that they need to produce their A game. If they don't, if there's any drop at all, Kilkenny will capitalise. Have no doubt about it. So, and because of that pressure in the back of Limerick's minds they will deliver yes, and they they're are. they're a seasoned team I mean there was going to be trouble once they got out of Munster and they've, after getting out of Munster and the run in now is, it's not like a week on it's not like week after week like the Munster Championship they got a couple of weeks left coming into the Galway game um, and for a team at their stage and they're playing they don't need to be slogging it out no. week after week so I think it's just sitting nicely for Limerick and you'd imagine Aaron Glan has been their star performer all year um, where in other years it's been someone like Garrod Hagerty or Keane Lynch um, there's a few Limerick players I'd imagine John Kiley would be expecting big performances from them they're due big performances yeah. um, uh, and the fact that you've done it before you know what's in there before where um, and I hate saying this because you don't associate this with Kilkenny but you'd imagine outside of TJ Reid and Owen Cody like you have other players they need to play the games of their lives for Kilkenny to win yes like that's a fair summary yeah so look uh, Limerick just about to shade it but if Kilkenny win it doesn't surprise me because I'm just used to Kilkenny winning all of yeah you're used to disappointment in life and Kilkenny winning that's what I'm taking what a combination <laughs> job, telling uh, it's funny to wrap up I asked you before we started will you be at the game and you said oh no I'll be helping out in my wife's coffee shop yeah so yeah, you're not going to see the game it's, it's funny Joe no I, I won't see the all Ireland final and you're not, you're working, are you working full time as well uh, so I work a full time job yes coffee shop uh, at the weekends. I work with a company procure.ie okay. they employ John Small and Dean Rock up in Dublin okay. so I work for them down in uh, down in Cork um, they're energy brokers and then I I tell my wife it's just out of love that <laughs> I, 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 I give her a hand she's been running a coffee business for the last three years where she's from in Shannon in Cork lovely village going towards West Cork sorry for the last three years I mean she started it during Covid yeah right and it's an interesting time to start a business I know I know <laughs> she, did, she did, like like all of us Joe she had a dream years ago right but the only person that was stopping that dream was who you're looking at him okay. here okay so um Oh, she was daft, you know, when she was on about this 20 years ago, like, and, uh, but anyway, she started off and it's been going from strength to strength for her and yeah. What's the name? She gets the name Quirky Kitchen. Quirky, Quirky Kitchen. Kitchen. She, so Quirk is her uh, maiden name. Okay. She still uses her maiden name, something I'm not happy about, but anyway. Good she's on her. Still good on her. She's good on her. <laughs> um, so Quirky Kitchen, yeah. So I'll be, so if anyone wants to share... <laughs> The all on file with me at the Quirky Kitchen, by all means, be on Gantep and we'll follow Twitter or we'll follow some kind of social media platform to, um, to but yeah, t- that's what I get up to know Joe most weekends. Good man. Okay. I know you're, you're a coffee connoisseur now. I don't even drink coffee, Joe. Oh, I know. Do you have a vice? I mean, what's your problem? Uh, uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> Do I have a voice? Uh, oh, 
I know. You're looking too good for a man of 46 as well. You look like you still it's play. just for men, Joe, boy. When did you uh, stop playing club? Uh, i say my last year was 2016, my last year. And yeah. ever since then, I've just been engrossed in... Coaching. Involved in teams in my own club. Because you still look super fit, genuinely. Like, are you working ah, hard um, to keep fit? Watch what I eat, mainly. Mm. I mean that discipline hasn't left I, I don't, no not really because um, I mean you have to be ultra careful when you finish playing because you know like that if you're not expending X <laughs> but if you're inhaling Y like you know like yes, yes. the equation doesn't work that way so I I, 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 I just be careful with what I eat um, I try and do exercise not as much as I'd like to because I could be out four nights a week you know training in the evenings training teams um, uh, I, I just keep on telling this distress of being involved with teams kind of um, uh, and uh, yeah and I mean that's life th- th- that's, that's it that's it okay yeah. so you can be found in the quirky kitchen on Sunday when the All-Ireland final's on and most weeks call in to me coffee. guys yeah anyone near there just call in to me and, and will um, you ever will you ever go into management management at a Senior level, like let's uh, winning things. Cor- would be would being cork manager be a thing that you'd have your eye on down the line? Oh, that's a serious question, Joe. Are you allowed to ask those questions? I don't know. You know, um, management different gig, like a different gig, like different gravy. Um, um, I, I, so I'd like to be involved in cork teams doing well. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know, kind of, uh, and then. Like thankfully, oh, underage for the last couple of years have been performing yes, well. Do you yeah. know, either at minor or on a twenty, at senior level. I mean, it's not lost to me. And other people in Cork were nearly coming twenty years since we last won it. Like, mm. so would I like to be part of a setup? Do you know what I mean? To bring success at senior. Absolutely. Will it be in the management capacity? Probably not. Mm. Do you know. Um, there's a role there for Something. someone like me and okay, good. even a gopher role I, no, I don't, I'll take it <laughs> I don't doubt there is uh, listen we've taken up your, enough of your time and I should say you were here with thanks to Board Gosh Energy so Off The Ball has teamed up with the Senior Hurling Championship sponsors Board Gosh Energy to uncover stories highlighting the positive impact hurling has had on people's lives I dare say you'd uh, qualify for that uh, full competition details go to boardgoshenergy.ie forward slash BGE GAA uh, great to catch up with you we spoke 10 years ago in a studio so it's good to do a catch up you're looking to have you you're looking the same no, man. Listen, I'm telling you Joe what's your secret lad? Uh, I, I, there's no secret to me uh, trust me Thanks. Sean O'Gohalpin what a pleasure good to see you again